Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Um, thank you to the designers for joining us tonight and also the audience. Tonight uh, is our last online book club as part of the exhibition Behind the Books, which is an exhibition of the most beautiful Swiss books at Tender Books in London. Uh, the exhibition, as we were just saying, might run a bit longer. It was due to end on Saturday. It might be open until Friday next week, um, but we'll communicate that on our <coughs> websites and social media. Um, the exhibition is for sure open until Saturday, as I was saying. Uh, it's open every day, well, Wednesday to Saturday from 12 till 6. So do not hesitate to drop by and have a look at the exhibition. Uh, you can see the set design on screen. It's quite interesting to be able to see the books in person as well. Um, we also have to thank a few people before we start. So um, the most obvious thank yous go to our sponsors, um, which are the Swiss Federal Office of Culture, the organizers of the competition of the most beautiful Swiss books. And um, they also go to the Swiss Embassy who support us every year uh, to organize this exhibition. This year, the scenography was um, designed by Takeshi Hayatsu. Uh, their arch is a, he's an architect uh, and has a practice here in London. And uh, we were able to secure a sponsorship from Arctic Papers, which turned out to be uh, really important for us to be able to realize the set design, which as you can see, uses quite a lot of paper, which don't worry, will not get wasted at the end of the exhibition. We also have to thank Tamzin, our host at Tender Books. Um, it's been great to organize our exhibitions there and uh, do pay her a visit. It's really important to visit shops, bookshops, especially at the moment. Uh, as you know, it, it can be quite difficult for small businesses. Tonight, we have two guests streaming from two different European cities. We have Dan Solbach, who is streaming from Berlin. He's in quarantine in Berlin. <laughs> and we have Mithil, who is uh, based between different French cities. I don't know which one he's in tonight. Paris, Lyon, Valence. Um, in Valence, I think. Yeah. Um, and uh, of, course, of course, both of them were awarded in this year's um, Most Beautiful Swiss Books exhibition. And Dan Solbach also was awarded with his book, um, A Golden Letter, which is the equivalent of the most beautiful books in the world. And I'm sure he'll be telling us a bit about that as well. The first speaker will be Dan. Um, Dan is Swiss originally and uh, he specializes in book design and visual identities. His practice focuses on design for artists, galleries, and contemporary art institutions. And um, yeah, this year he designed a book called Almanac Eka for uh, an institution called Head in Geneva, the Art School of Geneva. And Dan, the floor is yours. Uh, Jonas, thank you both also thank you and Matthias for inviting me and for organizing this and for continuously organizing the exhibitions in London. Um, I thought I might talk about a bit about the project, the book itself, what it was, but also more about the content, because for me, it's more interesting to talk about the content of a book than the graph design aspects of it, because I think the reason why we do this, or at least me, is to provide a platform for content. So um, I'm going to share the screen. Oh, does that work? What do you see now? Do you see now the presentation? OK. So. Um, this book, the Almanac Eka, is um, the result of three years of research, um, a research project that was uh, initiated by the school head in Geneva in collaboration with the MAMCO, <laughs> the Museum of Modern Art. And um, it was centered around the archive of the group Eka. What was Eka? Eka was, um, uh, how can I do the next page here? Um, Eka was a Genevan artist collective that founded, 
was founded in 1969 and sort of existed until 82. Um, it was uh, a bookshop, an exhibition space, a publisher, a printing house, a performance collective, a, um, experimental film company. Um, it was lots of different things. What um, I think is important in regards to ECA is that it, at the time, operated at the very like sort of outskirts of what was the contemporary art scene. Geneva was not um, Paris. It was not Basel or Düsseldorf. So it was at the time um, there was sort of mixed, there was no contemporary art scene really, and Eka sort of was the first time where contemporary art was made visible in Geneva, and they created also a very strong and wide ranging network between um, them and other Swiss artists and um, collectives, as well as um, people, artists or positions in the former Soviet Union, in uh, the uh, United States, South America, kind of all over the place. Um, and it's also the first sort of the first time where um, production is being made visible in contemporary art at, in the 70s and not, um, it's not about only like presentation of art. So um, this was the archive how we found it um, a few years ago before the research project really started. It was um, kind of, it came, to, it still belongs to John Armleder and it kind of came together in the late 90s when Lionel Bovier, who's now the director of Mounko and Christoph Scherix, who's now the curator at the MoMA, when they were doing a research, um, a PhD on a car and an exhibition, and the, which end, resulted in a publication. And this is a reprint of it now, which is the kind of history chrono chronology of Eka. This is a reprint that was now re um, translated in English and as well uh, republished in French in the scope of this research project. Um, so the idea was to transfer this archive to the school. And then there was a main researcher, Elisabeth Chauvin, who was mainly going through the archive and deciphering it uh, in, uh, together with, in tandem with John Ahmed, so to say. And Jan Chatenier from the school was the main, um, let's say, the administrative organizer. So Elisabeth and Jan, those are the main publishers. And then there were other researchers, um, such as Emily Parondo, who's uh, doing a PhD on Flux's performances right now, performance scores right now. Um, Mathieu Copeland, who's a uh, curator. Uh, Pierre Leguillon, who's an artist who is also working with um, kind of similar interests. Um, visually, the books, I would say maybe works, the page kind of works as a scanner. We try to reproduce the documents in a one-to-one -one size. There is a certain grid um, but it's quickly also discarded to um, place the documents in the foreground. So the grid is kind of maybe hugging the documents. And this method of placing them in the corner results in these um, different uh, white spaces, I guess. And what our method was in selecting documents from the archive um, as you see here, maybe was to create a fictional yearbook. That is um, a book that spans a fictional year of 12 years, but to find um, a document that relates to each day of the year. So this might be an exhibition invitation. It might be a score of a performance. It might be a note. It might be an invoice from a bookshop or from a publisher. And so this kind of, yeah, it's, uh, it was sort of a rules or a playful a game, which allowed us to navigate the archive in a, in a, with a similar method as, or kind of picking up on a, on a Fluxus method maybe, yeah, or in a collective um, game. 
But then there were also pages that we couldn't assign dates to or documents to. So there were certain Joker pages. And there's like a selection of for each month of a different um, Joker. In this case, it's the Livre du Thé, which was um, remnants of tea sessions that ECA continuously had, um, which was, I don't know if it was really planned to ever be a book, but it's that was what was written on the box at the time. Um, and then there's also, there's essays. And then there's also uh, sort of like questionnaires which um, are connected to specific documents in the book. These questionnaires were laid in on just like offset A4 paper. Um, um, exactly next or after, before or after the document that they um, describe. Um, yeah, and there's also, I, for the typography, I work together with Fabian Harp, who's uh, from Dynamo, and we created this typeface that was based on the uh, mm -hmm. typeface <clears throat> for the for their newsletters. But um, yeah, we just had to make some changes to make it more legible. In the, I mean, you see now this newsletter is quite hard to read. So that's that. I wanted maybe I can also show there's a few other things. Did it did you did it work this time um, when I showed the ECA book, the other one? Which other one? Other oh, yeah. oh, so you didn't see it actually. Yeah. The photograph, so no no this <laughs> I think it didn't work. Yeah. I mean, this this is the, the the book that was reprinted. It's the chronology of ECA, which is now um, available in English for the first time and reprinted in French. Designed by David Mami and uh, Nicola Todeschini. So here you find many more, a lot more images that really relate to the activities of ECA, which we didn't really have to um, show anymore. And this book is kind of a sort of what started it for me. It was like when I was teaching in Geneva, I heard about this um, mystical book that was um, apparently printed in the 70s and then um, lost. It was never finished. It was just that the signatures were printed, but it was never bound or cut or collated. Um, so this is. Um, a collection of stamps that was used uh, for male art artists and it's um there's the first edition there's this artist Eve Fischer he made the first book the art and communication marginal um, and then Eka said they wanted to um extend it and that and then a lot of artists just produced more and more and more stamps so it was a never-ending project that was actually never like maybe that's also the reason why it was never finished but so this was finally found somewhere on an attic uh, covered in bird droppings and it was cleaned and um, made available again also as part of this um, research project. And I don't know, I mean, I have other books that sort of relate to certain things like uh, the Happening Fruits <coughs> Catalogue alone. Which I mean, it's it's just a general interest. It's a bit damaged, but it's a general interest, like how um, this kind of disregard for layout or disregard for a certain grid, which I find uh, continuously interesting. Or um, of course, the, this is something that is just. I mean, it continues to be an inspiration, but also it's kind of something that. I wanted to have the same um, flexibility for the book. I mean, this is Andy Warhol's Moderna Museum book, which is um, content-wise, or um, let's say layout-wise, I don't doesn't really have much to do with it, but it's just always this um, phone book character that I really like. 
And here's also something that might maybe relate to sort of the same time. It's more about the 60s when, in that case, Cologne. Um, but I recently found this. It, it wasn't, I didn't have it when I started to work on the project, but it's just so, so I guess at the moment I'm really into these like really simple, rough um, typewriter books. Yeah. Yes, that's that. What? But um, yeah, I'm not really, <laughs> I don't know what more to say. Fill in. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dan, for your presentation. Um, if anybody has questions, please keep them for the end. We'll have a round of discussion at the end of the session, and you'll be able to share them in the chat. Um, we're now ready to move to Atelier Musli, who's represented tonight by Mithil. Um, Mithil is one half of uh, Atelier Musli. Uh, the other half is Léa Chapon. And they founded the studio in 2008. Uh, they work mainly in print, uh, particularly publishing and visual identity. They also sometimes do work, as they say, peripherally, um, in web and video, meaning, you know, by, uh, as part of projects, as a sort of second step of a project. They're mainly active in the field, field of culture, meaning contemporary arts, performing arts, dance, digital arts, architecture, music and design. And they really, um, they, ground, they ground their approach in typography, sign and the graphic form in general. Uh, recent clients include um, uh, art, art institutions, museums, and public institutions such as, mainly in France, such as the CNAP, the Centre Pompidou in Paris, the uh, Musem, the uh, centre called FRAC, um, and the Venice Biennale. So very much into the arts um, sector. Thanks, Mithil, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, first, thank you to everyone for the invitation and sorry for my English. I'm not sure I will, I will try to do it, but it will not be so good. So forgive me. Um, first, I must say a bit about uh, the context, the context of the, the command. Um, we've, we've been very, um, um, <laughs> We share the, the working place with an um, um, architect, uh, which are in fact the, um, the people who asked for this book. So the name is Park Architect, and it's a small agency. And the particular point uh, on this uh, agency is their interest in, um, I think they have a, interest in theory and also anthropology. Uh, people like uh, Philippe Descola and Bruno Latour, which are uh, a bit far from us um, ordinary, uh, our practice. But in fact, I, we, we share common interest in that, um, in that point of view and also in how it can, it can help in design and in architecture to build meanings. And also I have to say that it's, um, it's a strange book because as a lot of architect, architects, they wanted to make a monograph, but they don't want to say it's a monograph because obviously it's a kind of communication tool and they want to make a real book. There is a kind of, selfish thing, but they have a real interest in um, talking about something else. And um, they are in a kind of school of architecture. We, we, could, we can name, um, I don't know, climatic uh, architecture. So all the book is dealing about that. Um, first, maybe I can, I can share some images. Uh, okay. The book is quite tall, 
and it's quite simple. It's it's thin, so and it, we wanted to make something like uh, you know to have some classical uh, objects. So you have everything you can find in a beautiful book, like uh, in a classical sense of the word, like um, uh, a hat cover, uh, all this kind of stuff. But at first, um, what came before was not this uh, idea because I can. I wanted to show you. The first thing they they showed me was something very simple. It's um, you know when you use word in uh, the I mean the the program word. Mm -hmm. uh, you have this mode where the text is like this, a big column, and I. <laughs> It's quite stupid, but I don't use word like that. So I was very impressed by this big column. And these people, um, one of the, there are two associates and one is more in theory. So he has a, a very strong link with uh, theory and encyclopedical uh, knowledge. He made a PhD at the uh, PFL. So, I, I at the first at the first glimpse I, I saw oh there is something like the I don't know how you say that a parchemin you know the old one when the book was um, uh, a you you know something uh, very long very long scroll, scroll. thank you and so and then um, it became interesting to say okay maybe we can do something between this past and finally it's very um it's very near the idea of internet to a very big column so as you ask it could be interesting to to show uh, some research <laughs> i went to the archive and i found this <laughs> and finally it's not very different from the end it was just the first inspiration was to make something like um, I said uh, for myself, it was something like a PowerPoint uh, uh, document. It was a kind of joke because of these, we, we are used to work with architects and they always want some monographs and there is something fake with that. So, and we shared this idea with uh, Park. Um, so, very simple, there was not no folio, no, nothing. But finally, if you look on a flat, on a flat way, um, you see the, the layout at the end is quite the same, but different. Um, okay, so um, maybe I can show you in real. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah, better. Okay. Yes. Is that working? Yeah. Yes. You yeah. see that? Yeah, it's just upside down, but it's yeah, yeah so perfect. I do it like that. Um, okay. So you see, uh, the, this idea was. Um, was also right uh, from the beginning to the end of the book. There is no no stop. Uh, there is stops, but the column is coming on the um, on the first page, and then there is um, a structuration uh, a structure which is very simple. It's come from the cosmos and goes to the ground, and it's it analyzes uh, the practice of the agency through all of this. And um, one of the things which is interesting, it was we were very involved in the, um, in the process of choosing uh, images. And uh, yeah, we spent three years to talk about these images, uh, which kind of images to find, uh, to, to select, because the, the game was at first to illustrate, and then, because of what I said before, they were very influenced by 
Um, you know, when uh, Bruno Latour and he's talking about how science is a social, um, social uh, process in its elaboration, the, their vision was quite the same. They wanted to, um, uh, to talk uh, beyond archi architecture, to talk about how um, this image could um, enlarge the vision. And uh, we have to deal with, um, how to say that, uh, talk also about what the, these, the medium of the images are talking about. The, the best example was um, this kind of image like Thomas Ruff. This is a NASA uh, picture taken from Hubble, but the work of Thomas Ruff was to to take this little photo, little uh, picture, and then to combine them to offer uh, a proper vision, but also a, a best vision than the lens of the Hubble telescope. So it's all about um, dealing between art fact and uh, science fact. Uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's complicated to explain, but it's an input. So, a major part of uh, our work was to, to search for images. And um, yeah. Um, I could show, yeah. A good example. Is like this. Uh, um, to 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 choose this um, this picture from it's a, uh, an extract from a, a video uh, of Philippe Parino. and um, I, first I have to mention that they are when when they work they are very influenced by this kind of uh, artistic uh, picture. Uh, they collect a lot, and but they have a, a more uh, sensitive approach to it. They, they don't say it, but you can see that. And um, uh, when you, when we, I was just trying to illustrate some kind of concepts quite uh, difficult or too naive, like nature and culture and subjectivity. And I found this video where Philippe Arenaud went to Japan to film a monkey that have, uh, that still live in Fukushima's ruin and uh, before it, he, he went to there because he saw him uh, on the, the internet. It was a meme. It was a meme about uh, this monkey was um, a waiter in a restaurant and he is still there. So it was uh, all about uh, searching for images, telling story, but beyond uh, what they are, uh, what uh, they are talking in the, in the book. It was about to enlarge their, um, what they said. So okay, maybe I can switch. And you said, uh, because I can, this is for the, the picture part and I can talk about, um, we, we talk with Jonas about uh, the, our process mainly in edition, not for every project, but we are used now for, I don't know, it's since two years to use a kind of plugin that works as it, it's kind of, it's a kind of emulation as uh, what we do, we did in the old time, you know, when we made layout on paper with pen and it's named um, Grid Edition and uh, Grid Edition Pro and I can show you a quick video. You, you see that? Okay. So you see it works in, in design. It was not very interesting for this project, but since it's very, very simple layout, but as you see, you can order all your page. Uh, you can divide it. It make the mathematical uh, work for you and 
it can create um, the text zone. Oh, and you see, you can divide it. You see how many choice you can have for a certain amount of square. And all this stuff is very interesting because you can, you can um, design like uh, in an objective way or something like that. You can believe it. And um, yeah, I, I'm quite interesting with that uh, vision, you know, a very old school like Miller Brockman uh, vision. And this tool is quite perfect for that. So, um, yeah. What is it called again? What? What is it called again? It is this Grid Calculator Pro Edition. Okay. You, you, yeah, you can find it on internet. And so what, this kind of details, you can, you have a um, uh, grid line for the, um, like usual in, in design, but also for the, uh, you know, the, um, uh, I don't know the name, but it's all based on the leading. And then you have this second grid, the, the green one, where you can uh, align text and uh, picture. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of feature like that, quite interesting. So yeah, I think for me it's okay, I don't know. Brilliant. Thank but you did very you much. Find the book with this grid calculator. Yeah. Or you use this continuously as a tool for you, or? Now, yeah, I'm gonna say yes because no. I'm I'm too I'm um, addict to it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's 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 a kind of uh, stupid thing because uh, I was so addict so. I feel at the moment it was too um, restricting. Uh, you, you know, everything is so mathematical. But now I try to to have some um, some phases where I just put things like that. But always at the end, I try to find some you know proportion yeah, because sure. it, it helps you for that. Yeah. Thank you both very much for your, for your presentations. Um, we'll now move on to the questions part. So if anybody in the audience has any questions at all, please use the chat or the Q&A function and I'll pass the questions on to um, the speaker. Um, I forgot to add something. Yeah, please do. Yeah, because, um, because of this award, the book is uh, sold out, right? Maybe a lot of people have um, tried to get it, but there's going to be a reprint in French, at least soon by the end of this year, and maybe even an English edition. But this is a bit more. Yeah. But so, if you don't, if people don't find the book now, they can also maybe we can find a method to collect the emails of people that want it, and then I can get them into a newsletter or something. It's interesting because um, actually two days ago we had a presentation by Adeline. Mola from Zurich, and she talked about the book she designed called Children. And she mm. also mentioned that it's already in the second reprint and they're maybe looking at a third reprint. Wow. And uh, it's interesting because uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if it has anything to do with the award. Do you think that winning, for you winning the two awards helped the sales of the book or is it something that was unrelated? I think the, I'm not sure about the Swiss awards because the last times I've won it, I never really saw a change. I mean, I, I'm also not on that on the side where I would see this really, but um, I have the feeling that with this like uh, golden letter, that it really um, a lot of people wanted to get it. Mm. But it, the print run was a bit low from the beginning, maybe. And then there's um, two partners, the Mamco and the school. They all have their own copies as well. So. Yeah. So I have a question, which is kind of for, for you both, actually, because um, Dan, you've mentioned uh, obviously the, the, the various influences on the choices you made on the book. And it'd be great if you could expand a bit on that. So you, you showed um, the Fluxus material and obviously the material of the book itself is based in the 60s, 70s. And then um, 
obviously for Mithil and Natalie Musli, it's quite clear that even on the cover, there is a clear reference to a certain era as well. So both of them are, you know, 70s, 80s. Um, and I wanted to ask about these sort of very time, you know, time stamped references in the design. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was, it's always, I have generally, I have a difficulty with design in that regard because design or everything that we work with is um, shape and shape is always referential to a certain period. Um, so this is, a, so I kind of try to get, like, uh, get away from this. Um, confined um, method of working where everything has to be in reference to something. But then at the same time, I'm also really bored sometimes of the Swiss grid. So the ECA book, for example, provided um, a chance for me to really only work with this material and like base the typeface on it, base the layout on the sort of excavation aspect of going through an archive. Um, so in a way, I, I think there's like no outside references, but then there's also all the books that I've known or, or that I have in my library or um, that can, kind of come into play, but maybe not directly. It's not like I really taken, like any, everything that is in there is, from the archive. Mm. There's well, no, including the typeface as well. Including the typeface, yeah. Mm. The dividers, the chapters, chapter pages, they have these, I mean, also the cover, right? So these, like this logo, this one, it's all different um, iterations uh, from newsletters or inv invitations or so. So, I mean, I never thought about this, but really, I think everything in there is from the archive itself. Mm. There's no outside reference, which to me is kind of the goal to, to create something that is not referencing to something outside. It's not link, not, not like, you know, so sometimes the reference works like a hyper, hyperlink as well, which can be interesting as well. But I feel that in graphic design, it's so simple to always create an atmosphere, you know? to use, let's say, a Baroque typeface, and then you're immediately there, but you leave the book sort of. So, mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Mithil? Uh, it's uh, very interesting, but uh, I'm in a very different uh, case in that book, but I'm sensitive to that um, and to this idea of uh, design self, uh, um, self form, I don't know, shape. Uh, here, for, for us, the, um, even the cover is, uh, so in a way, it, it, it deals with the 70s because of all these books of um, uh, gray literature, you know, uh, and in France, there is this, uh, like many other countries, but it's a, it's a country of uh, structuralism and thing like uh, this. Um, at the beginning, when we talk about uh, this kind of stuff in anthropology, I, I don't go deep in that because in English it's quite, it's difficult, but um, we have this, you know, this ghost behind the client. And I feel quite interesting like Dan, but in another way to, um, to assume that, to say, okay, it's a, you want to, to, you want to be seen as that. So let's make something obvious. Let's make something that uh, talks about that. But inside the book is quite different for me because I have no archive. I have something, uh, it's quite the, the opposite movement because I'm not, um, I'm not, uh, we say gathering uh, yeah i'm gathering but i'm enlarging i'm finding you i have my these these architects are take, uh, are talking about okay i want to, to talk about uh, the hair waves how we can deal with that in um, in a place to uh, organize the window and that's how we do our buildings and what is very interesting is that they always link that to um 
artistic um, uh, gesture or like, okay, it's remind me this kind of, uh, and then, um, so I, I assume I, I, I'm okay with that, with um, uh, creating uh, an atmosphere and the atmosphere of the book is quite light. Um, even here, I, I didn't have, um, it is, uh, it's setting, it, it's typesetted uh, in Stanley, uh, but I think there was a, a, a wish to make something quite, um, I don't know how to say that, quite something uh, linked to literature, something like quite classical. I don't know if I, I'm not sure I, uh, <laughs> I answered the question, but. <laughs> I had a question for Dan. Um, you mentioned the other books around Eka. And can you tell us a bit about how your book, the book you designed, placed itself in relation to these books? Because surely it must have really impacted what you could do editorially. Yes, so the first book that came was this one. That was um, from the beginning kind of quite clear that this, um, that the book from the late, late, late 90s, which was called in French, uh, I don't know, I don't have it here, but uh, which was from this Mamco series um, that uh, did have to be reprinted because it was um, yeah, out of print and really expensive in the market. So this kind of came early. I was maybe, I mean, I had like roughly an idea of how I would treat the, the inside of the book. But when it came to the, and I also, I mean, generally I like books that are flexible, that um, feel fast in a sense, you know, where like, um, I didn't want this to be a hardcover and between um, and feel like a tombstone. That's, um, I wanted this to be an, a, a sort of, while it's historical, while it's an archive, I wanted it to feel as if it could just be recent or there's different starting points. We chose one starting point that was this like, rule set of rules. Someone else would go through the archive totally in a totally different way. And that's why I think the, um, it is this flexible soft cover. But then of course, um, content wise, because this book is the historic, um, it's the chronology, chronology of Eka, um, we didn't have to really talk about this anymore. Because uh, so we didn't, there's a, a few images in the essays related to certain um, exhibitions, maybe, or topics, or, but um, we didn't have to retell this story. So that was done here. But then at the same time, I kind of liked. Um, I mean, I had this in mind anyway, but I also picked up a bit on this, um, on the way it's produced. I mean, here the dust jacket is glued on, but um, yeah, I mean, also because it's ar archival, you know, you just, um, I mean, that's sort of the material you work with. You have like um, cardboard boxes, and then it's a, a group that was working with mail art and envelopes. So you have this packing material. It just sort of lends it to this kind of form, I think, in the end. But yes, and then, and this sort of happened in the meantime. This was, I mean, basically, I think um, uh, Gilles Gravier did the cover and that's it. The content is just was printed in the 70s, so yeah. But um, it was good to have these, um, I think it's nice that there's a research project with three different designers for three different books and very different books, so to say. It fits well with what the way they operated as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mithil, I wanted to ask about the status of that book, because you, you, you talked quite a lot about how architects often love making monographs about their own work, even if they're disguised as a non-monograph. But what is, what is the status of the book that you designed for Park? The status? Yeah, what is it? If it's not a monograph, yeah. then what is it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, something I, I thought about, 
is uh, also with uh, the previous question. This is, a, uh, for me, there are some books, um, there are purpose books. This is a purpose book. It could have, it could have, and that's what I, uh, I, I was okay to do. Uh, it could have an identity, uh, you know, it can be subjective. You can go in that kind of story. Um, as well as you can have some good books where I mean I, I named it no no purpose it's not uh, it's not it's not uh, correct but where the designer has to like did that I mean and to the status uh, it's interesting because uh, for me is it's an interesting um, architecture book because it's more than architecture. It deals about how to expand architecture and also how to understand design, not as a question of culture only, shape, shape culture. And here you can um, link it to, um, I don't know, uh, um, you can, no, it's too too complicated to explain. Say it in French, maybe then. Yeah, um, I'm interested uh, in that uh, book. How these um, documents could talk about uh, the purpose? Uh, of course, it is that uh, the architects want to tell about architecture is more climatic. Uh, prob um, it has to deal with climate and um, environment and uh, quite okay with that, but um, putting some, I don't know how to say that. Now, to, to come back to the status, and th I think it's something between architecture book, uh, artistic catalog, you know, and also a bit theory uh book so maybe that and it, it gathered a lot of um uh, of discipline there is a some 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 works are from uh, the some picture i mean are from the science uh, field other from art other from uh, i don't know biology so you can make your own network and um, sometimes it's quite, it's more, it's even more interesting because the documents are not talking about their, just their topics, but uh, with their shape, they are talking about an area, about, um, I think, uh, to something like um, NASA's picture. Uh, we, we, may, we spent a lot of time to find the real first picture of the space where she, uh, how it, it was um, taken and uh, why people don't know this one and they know another one. So it is about the medium, you know, something like we all know, but it's very interesting in the book because you have the main column and then you have the, the caption and the caption are sometimes very long to deal with um, the topics, but also this, medium and to explain what is it, if it is, uh, it could be data, it could be, so you have, um, it's very strange, you know, it's like uh, encyclopedic, but, uh, so I don't know the status. <laughs> yeah, that kind of answers my question, actually. Okay. Maybe it's also an almanac in a sense, no? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, my kind of last question to you both uh, relates to how you worked with the client to come up with a concept because I was wondering how Dan you sort of ended up deciding to do this almost like a yearbook and choosing this quite strong selective process but also almost um, arbitrary selection process of taking one day one document is that something that came up in your discussions with the curator and the researchers or was that something you came up with or no, it's something okay so I have to say I was um, part of the research team as well and I also made a selection of documents we all made so everybody 
made a selection of documents. Some people focused on specific things. For me, one of the selections I did was like um, re um, returns, uh, return to sender, like envelopes that they didn't, that arrived back. I, re I think so. Um, then, so everybody made a selection. We all gathered this um, on Trello. And I think it was Pierre Legion or um, Emily Parondo that came up with this set of with this game. But um, the idea there was to really to kind of apply to our collective of researchers a similar um, system that Eka might have chosen to do something like that. It's almost like a reenactment. Uh, yes, it is arbitrary in a sense because we had to map something. But then for many days, there were like several documents that we had to choose. So we had, we could vote on which was our favorite document. But then also um, Elisabeth, who was the main researcher, she had sort of the um, veto, right? Where she could say, okay, this document is interesting because of this and that relation or so and so on. It has to be, it has to stay in the book. Um, that's how we selected it. Yeah, and that's how we did. That's what the process was behind the book, really. And then, of course, I mean, the design decisions, I more or less um, was able to do it on my own. Um, there's this, like, the, below the dates. I don't know if you saw that. We have these. Um... So my concern with the whole thing was a bit that it was... Um, this um, an almanac usually has everything, right? You can see what the, where the moon is, some astrology and whatever. So my, I didn't want it to be too lexicalic. I didn't want to be a reference to every, I wanted this to be centered around the document. And um, it's the only concession I kind of made was to have these like astrology symbols that connect to a category. And luckily we had uh, 12 categories. <laughs> so we could do this astrology thing, which also kind of plays nicely into a certain aesthetic that Eckhart had at the time. You have to th you know, I mean, there they're, they're, they were hippies in the beginning. The, uh, like the summer of love arrived quite late uh, in Switzerland. Um, so also in 1972, you would use this uh, symbolism. There's uh, they, uh, one imprint, publishing imprint that they had was called Double Sphinx. So there's a lot of esoteric um, um, visuals around there, also in these stamps. And it was, it was kind of fit well, nicely to do these um, signs. Uh, that's uh, more or less, yeah. Yeah. And you, Mithila, how did you work with the client to come up with this concept? Um, we, we, we were involved at the very beginning of the project and uh, start to talk about um, there was this this canvas of text with these images and at a certain point I said um, I was able to 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 change images and to go further in the in each um, topics and then it was a, a kind of ping pong with them. And also um, there was this part, which I have talked about, so, okay. And also um, then there was a, a lot of, uh, if you see the images of uh, their work in the, in the book, there is a lot of, uh, how you say that, you, you know, it's not real. There is a lot of uh, computer images uh, because they are young, uh, mainly. And so we have to, <laughs> to deal with that. And I think it was, um, it pushed, it pushed it to, um, to have something else, something bigger. And it was quite interesting for that because how you can, sometimes when the, the building is done, you have to, you make the, the beautiful photos and that's all. And then, so we talk a lot about uh, talking uh, uh, in the book of this aspect you can't uh, show uh, through these um, uh, computer images. And then there was um, a work around uh, drawing too, because we, were, we had a, a few experience 
with the uh, architecture book. So it was just about dealing uh, how to find the style, uh, making something very simple. And that's it. For the plan. Or... Yeah, for the plan. I mean, yeah. And um, there is, yeah, there is uh, all a part of uh, drawing in the, um, in the book, plan, and also uh, like uh, sketches, but mm -hmm. um, computer sketches to show some um, some ideas, basic uh, principle. Mm -hmm. We have two questions from the audience, um, from an anonymous attendee. Uh, the first question is, could you talk a little bit about the printing process? How did you choose the printer? And then the second question is, could you share the design fee you were paid to design the book? Yes, I just, I'm, the printing was uh, through the publisher. It was uh, a print I've worked with for the first time. They were called La Buona Stampa in um, Berlinzona. And they produce books, but they also produce a lot of um, newspapers. And they also do the, what is it, like the report of the, some kind of government report that is like, or like judiciary report or something. Yeah. The Gazette or whatever. This was it. like, that's, it, I, I'm saying this because it was quite interesting. I was there to print and then suddenly they knew because when the courthouse sends the documents at like six or seven in the evening, that's when they immediately have to go to print and then then uh, they print this book for the whole night. So the all the rest of the production is stopped because they have to do this court um, newspaper or whatever, court magazine or something, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> um, but no, it was really good and it was, um, I mean, they were super happy, of course, to have, uh, to be, have received both of these awards and uh, it was um, the lithography was done with, with someone that is that I also have never worked with before. It's Roche Emeneko in from Lausanne, who I assume is a bit of a legend in the French part of Switzerland. But uh, no, it was that was great. And the design fee, I believe, I was paid um, twelve thousand Swiss francs. I think. Yeah. Roughly, how long did it take you to design the book? The book I've been working on for, I mean, on and off, but it's over a year. Yeah. And the really biggest work, I mean, it was like two months, I guess, where I was just typesetting and placing images and doing 1,500 corrections and um, like this. But I mean, I was in the research team since uh, three years or so. Yeah. Great. And Thank it's you. a 420 page book. I think uh, 12,000 is quite okay. It's pretty cheap for that now, I guess. But then, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Mithil? Yeah, for us, um, we work for uh, not three years to two years and a half, but on and off, like you, of course. Uh, I don't know which time of typesetting, but it's a small book, you see, so it's more a work about uh, iconograph, like an iconograph. And um, the uh, question of fee, fee was, I, I, I don't remember, I think it's 6,000. I don't, I'm not sure. Euros. Euros, yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, I think, yeah. But there is also uh, an English version. Maybe we were paid for that too. Yeah, I don't remember if 6,000, 6, it's only for French, I believe, and 3,000 for, I don't remember. Okay. Uh, maybe it's wrong. And the uh, printer is Graphius in Belgium. Um, it's not, in fact, it's, it's, the economy of the book is quite uh, low. You know, it's just a small agency. They never had a book before. Um, we first think about print and printing in um, in France, south of France. There was a, a, ma a man um, named Escorbiac, which is quite famous in France, but he offered to print on, uh, you know, UV, uh, UV printing, you know, this 
techniques. And I was not happy with that because I didn't like the, um, the finish, mm -hmm. like, like a plastic, you know, like, uh, and, and sometimes it could be good, but it was a long deal with him to, uh, if he can do also something else, but uh, finally we, it was not like the, the, the spirit of this book, uh, it would have been too um, glossy, you know, so. And the lithography was by him too. So, but there is so so much different uh, picture that uh, you know it's not like a, a book by Steidel or it's. A, a, but how can I ask? How did you because it's so many different images? How did you deal with this issue of uh, securing the copyrights and Im image reproduction rights and? Yeah, it and was. Oh, it was huge. It was horrible, horrible. I mean, that's probably the main work, you know? I mean, almost. But, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I, I should have said that, but there is no editor. Uh, oh, yeah, at the, in, the, um, in the main process for uh, architecture book, you can go to uh, an editor or work with a big museum, you know yeah. that. But a lot that of, yeah. yeah. But a lot of architects want to make a book, but they, they don't know how to make edition. So mm -hmm. um, finally, it's not the first time we, we go to the editor and say, okay, here is the book, are you interested in? And they say, okay, if, they, if you even sometimes you pay them, you pay for a, a product, in fact. So here, as the process is quite different and it's not a book you of, uh, it's quite strange. When, when we went to an editor, he said, uh, a French one at first, he said, um, we said, okay, what can you do for us? Uh, you can do proofwriting, you can do, yeah, 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 I can do all of that. But for you, it's different because you have a content. So we said, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, usually people have no content. So in France, there is um, this, uh, this, not tradition, but a lot of um, editors are in fact like communication uh, uh, agency, you know? Ah, okay. They give you, the writer, everything. So mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. came, they come to your office and said, okay, what's your vision, what you want to do? And so here it's, it's quite different. So the editor was uh, at the end just, so it was just that he was mainly just distributing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He said, okay, the book uh, seems interesting. Let's do that. And then uh, that's all. <laughs> but do, do you feel like these fees are realistic in terms of, you know, the time frame of work that it took and just the time itself? For both of you, do you feel like this is, is it a, like possible to run a studio with these fees or are they way too low? Or is it something, you know, is it, is it like, because I feel like often, there's this image of like, okay, we can make beautiful books and that's what we do as designers, but that's kind of, that hides a, another reality, which is that these books often don't really pay very much at all. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm lucky to be able to only work with art clients and to do a lot of books, but also I have four institutions that I work with um, continuously. So every three, every third month, there's an exhibition where I do it invitation for for um, institutions which also doesn't pay that much but um yeah i mean that was a this was a, that was also a decision why i moved to berlin in order to have a cheaper studio than in switzerland and uh, uh, to pay less for an apartment that was the main reason and then also i see it now because now i'm finishing a few books that um i um, accepted that I took on three or four years ago when I was teaching and I had a different financial situation and now I realized that I made these I, only because I wanted to make these books um, happen I wanted to make them real or whatever you know I mean I think this is as I said before this is the main goal why I do make to this job is to mm. allow things to exist but uh, then I just made <laughs> such ridiculously low prices that now I'm finishing these books. I was just like, okay, I actually, I mean, I have to do it now, but I can never do this again. It's just, mm. uh, 
So it kind of forces you to get another job straight after or more jobs on the side. You just, yeah, just... I mean, that's why now, I mean, after this, uh, this uh, in after like April, the shock of March and April of the, of the, the, the pandemic, the lockdown, now I have like 12 books in the pipeline. It's, <laughs> it's completely insane. But I just said yes to everything because I was so, uh, you know, like... Scared of not having any work. Yeah, I mean, just at, the, at first everything uh, disappeared and then suddenly three months later, everybody wants to make a book, which is nice, but uh, now I'm kind of um, <laughs> looking, I mean, uh, <laughs> I was already joking that it would be kind of nice if I, if I was sick, then I would have to work for a week or two. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. And actually, there is Mat Matthias. I know Matthias is with his son Elio, so he can't speak at the moment, but he's um, texting me and uh, he wants to ask a question about uh, you, you both. I mean, Mitil, you didn't mention this, but you also moved out of Paris and then you moved out of Switzerland. So is, can you talk a bit about, about this element of exile, basically, to be able to sustain a practice? Yeah, I mean, that's, I, so for me, exile is, um, basically due to a, it's an economic exile maybe. Mm -hmm. But uh, and it's still sort of an exile because I work for, I have some Swiss clients, I never had that many. Um, but I really have almost no client in Berlin. Mm -hmm. um, still not after six years. I work with a lot of artists that are based in Berlin, but really no, almost no institution. It's um, it seems like I cannot really enter this um, sphere. So it remains a sort of exile. Also, it's a, a kind of an exile because it's the first place where I became Swiss. I never identified as Swiss. I have a Norwegian mother and I never really, I was born in Denmark. Um, and I identified maybe as someone that lives in Basel, but then suddenly you move to Berlin and the taxi driver asks you if you're from if you're Austrian or South German, then you say, oh no, I'm Swiss. And that's the moment where I became Swiss. So yeah, it feels like an exile in many ways, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, for, for us, um, I guess we, we wanted for a long time to, to leave country, the, the city, to have uh, more space, more, I don't know. Um, we were, I think it's related to the city. Yeah, in Paris, there is a um, very intense life, you know. It's very concentrated, M maybe less than London, but it's quite intense. And yeah, all the, all the stuff around the graphic design, like uh, we, we didn't want to make that all our life, but uh, it's a kind of paradox because now we are uh, more in the countryside. Uh, we enjoy go to, to Paris and even in the practice uh, of the city and even in the graphic design work, it, we, it created something more radical. We, we now in our practice are much more uh, uh, urban, I don't know how to say that, but yeah. Uh, so we we have a we sh we have a different model now. We we work for mainly for Paris, uh, but uh, when we were in Paris, we work for a lot of people around uh, in France or other countries sometimes, but mainly in France. And now it's all in Paris, and there is this uh, very <laughs> yeah, it reverses. But it's okay. I'm I'm okay with that. Going to Paris, being very uh, like that, and then have more quiet family style of life. Very nice. Well, thank you both so much for taking part in this conversation tonight and for uh, replying to all our questions. So honestly, it's been brilliant. Um, well, I can see Matthias is back. <laughs> Um, for our audience, uh, as a reminder, the exhibition is open for sure until Saturday and maybe until Friday next week. We'll communicate on that very soon. 
and we'll be putting these talks um, on YouTube if you want to refer to them uh, at a later date. Thank you so much and thank see you, you all very soon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye.